Um, second on the list, uh, Mr. Jim Rizzoli. Uh, my name is Jim Rizzoli, uh, Framingham resident. The uh, reason why I'm here tonight uh, is because of a, an egregious situation I think is happening in the town. I think the town should be made aware of it. It has to do with the uh, America, I mean, the Access Framingham TV station, the cable station, and the abuse of power that they have uh, done against my brother and I with our cable show. I have a letter I'm going to read. I want this read uh, into the record. I'm going to present it with you. Plus, I have other information to go uh, to give you when I'm done. And here's my letter, so I can it can be you know uh, well received here. Dear select persons, town of Framingham. I'm sure you're familiar with the role of the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. Their recent publication called Stand, Summer 2014. Uh, issue page two says this, the ACLU plays many roles in our nation's fight for civil liberties. Not all of them are very popular with the government, but even the broader public. We're here to speak truth to power. We're here to stand with the underdog. We're here to fight for the accused, even the high-hated and reviled. Recently, our local access channel known as AFTV, which we have been involved in for the last several years, decided to suspend us for 18 months on false and misleading charges. We believe they have violated our civil rights, our freedom of speech as set forth by the Constitution and FCC rules for cable content. As holders of the cable licenses for the town of Framingham, we ask you to assist us in our complaint against the Framingham Access TV, its acting director, Bill McColgan, and its board of directors, Bill Rapkin, president, David L's Vice President, Doug Freeman Treasurer, Brenda Thompson Stuckey Clerk, and Directors Edward Council, Michael Cunningham, Howard Newell, Jim Pillsbury, Lauren Taylor Fernandez for lying, censorship and copyright violations, not to mention slander and defamation, and for not upholding their fiduciary responsibility to be a fair, unbiased, socially and ethically responsible cable access channel. They have also shown to be highly discriminatory in what they allow or don't allow on their cable programming in direct violation of FCC rules. This letter of complaint is being presented to you, the Board of Select Persons, as holders of licenses for cable operations since you are the regulatory board for oversight for license applications in the town of Framingham. Any recipients of said licenses would have to show good faith and ethical practices to be a licensed access cable operator in the town of Framingham. And I'm sure you would agree. We believe and can prove that AFTV and their board of directors have not lived up to those high standards and the board of select persons would have for any reputable licensee. Who does AFTV answer to? We would like to meet with them. We feel it would be in the best interest of the town to discuss this with us and their legal counsel before we take this to the ne next level of complaint. Let's not forget what the ACLU said in the beginning here. We're here to uh, speak truth to power. We're here to stand with the underdog. We're here to fight for the accused, even the hated and the reviled. The question is, will you stand for the underdog? And here's, uh, I came in here today because I want to kind of solidify this case with you. And you might say, well, this isn't under your purview. And I say, you're wrong. It is under your purview. Right here, I have the licensee agreement, okay, with Comcast anyway. This is the major one, all right? And in it, this talks about censorship. No cable access station can stop any of them from putting anything on that TV. And that's what they did to us. And then when we went to appeal this case, they would not hear our appeal. That's why I have to come before you. Because... Who do I talk to? Who does AFTV answer to when they do these things against people in the town? Now notice, this I got. I was in the office today, and she, she I, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. But anyway, um, she saw me there. And in this Comcast agreement, it talks about censorship, and this is the agreement you have, uh, Comcast has with the town, and then you have to oversee this with the cable company. And it says censorship, section 614. Neither the licensee 
nor the town or its designees shall engage in any program censorship or any other control of the content of the PEG access programming on the cable system, except as otherwise required or permitted by applicable law. There's nothing that Rizzoli TV has done that has gone against applicable law. They made these rules and regulations up as they went along because they didn't like our programming. We were a conservative element in this town. The whole town is democratic. We represent a conservative element. And yet they don't want us on TV. I have a religious show. I have a political show. My shows are off TV now. The political system here is all democratic. I can't present my things on TV. And I'm a conservative. They took my shows off the air. There's a conspiracy with AFTV. And no one seems to care. They did this in 2010. We let that go by. I should have pursued it then because I never thought they would do it again. But they did it again because you have a small group of people in this town that run AFTV. And they didn't like our shows. Well, you know what they should have done with the shows? They should have moved them to a later hour. That's all they had to do. They banned us for 18 months. I have produced more cable access programming than anybody in this town, put, or all of them put together. And they take me off the air for 18 months because they don't like my programming. So the reason why you're getting pulled into this now is because you oversee the licenses, all right, of FPAC or AF Access Framingham. And you have to do something about it. We can't let them get away with this. Who do they answer to? That's my question. I need an answer. Who do they answer to? Mr. Rizzoli, we've um, gone beyond the three minutes, obviously. I understand. Um, I'm you, sorry. We have given you um, probably you more than double. Um, we have your letter. Uh, we'll take it under advisement. What we do in public participation is we hear what the public has to say, and we uh, look into the matter. I, but I um, want to hear back from you. I hope to hear back from well, you. Well, one of the steps that we would obviously want to take in a matter like this is, is to talk to um, the television station and get their... Uh, information on this matter. <coughs> I, I, I hope you will. I, mean, so, I, 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 know I you think will. we need to hear right. what they have to say, what the nature of the complaint is. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first thing we've heard at a meeting. I understand. And we, um, and we, and we need to get facts. So that's why we don't respond oh, I with action or with uh, feedback the night of, of, of a presentation. Right. But that's the question you have to ask them, who they answer to, because they don't answer to anyone and they do whatever they want in... Uh, and it's just really disturbing to see it happen. I'm going to leave a packet, you can leave a packet with more information in it. And I'll ask the town manager to follow up with getting a report from the, right. the cable. Uh, I, I appreciate the time tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rizzoli. Um,